in the shops in Sweden, I keep seeing these, and they're solid, weird pizza bases where you can make your own pizza. And I keep seeing them and thinking, shall I give them a try? Well, I bought some, and I'm giving give it a go. So, Ellis, what are you going to put on your pizza? I don't know. You don't know? No. What would you like to put on your pizza? Um, melted cheese. Melted and, cheese. And chocolate and bacon. Chocolate. Do you mean this on your pizza? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So first thing I'm doing is frying up some bacon because everybody loves bacon and bacon on, on pizza is just so, so good. So I can't believe I'm reading the instructions for this, but hey, just to get it right. It says warm the oven to 200 degrees, spread out your pizza sauce. For pizza sauce, I wasn't really sure what to use, but I'm using tomato puree from Ica. And I've also got some chunky salsa, so for mine I'm going to use that, which is medium spice, which should be alright. Then put on your own toppings, um, put in the oven for 10 minutes, and then share the bits out, <laughs> basically. Um, ready in 15 minutes. Not quite sure how this is going to go. Now they're a bit weird because they're solid, these. They're like really hard. But I'm expecting that once you put the toppings on, they kind of soften up a bit. What the hell? They have a hole in the middle. That's weird. Oh my gosh, look at this. This is going to be very strange. I mean, they look like some kind of weird frisbee at the moment. So we've got all of our toppings now. Some Serrano ham, some cognac uh, medwurst, which is basically cognac sausage, some bacon, mushrooms, chocolate, that's for Ellis, and some goat's cheese and some grated cheese as well. We've gone for the gratang, the even gratang. And then these weird pizza bases, which look like this. So I guess they go that way around. Not really sure, but we'll give this a try. So it's time to get spreading the tomato one. I've mixed together the tomato puree and tomato ketchup. And that's going to be our topping for the base. And Ellis is going to help me spread it. Knickerbrod. bread. Yeah, it is a bit. Knickerbrod. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what happened when I eat when I did eat the bacon. What happened? Yeah, that, that, that made so, so, so my, so my, so my hands they do like this. Oh! <laughs> okay. Now it's cheesy time. So spread the cheese out so it's all around your pizza. That's it, you need every little bit of the pizza covered. We are making a mess, aren't we? <laughs> oh, wow. This is now installing the chocolate and the bacon on his pizza. Oh yes. Chocolate, unusual choice, but no worse than pineapple in my opinion. <laughs> so toppings are in place. We've got the chocolate and the bacon pizza here. And then we've got my mushroom, bacon, cheese. Mm, Ellis, stop eating the bacon. And now I'm going to add some of these. <laughs> oh wow, look at this. This is looking amazing. Mmm. So oven is preheated to 200, as it says, and they are ready to go in. This could be a disaster, but I'm hoping it actually is going to work out. So there they are in their pre-cooked state. Let's get them in the oven and see what happens. So one thing to note when you lift them up is be careful of the weight of them because they're not, they're actually quite fragile. So that's one in, one to go. Set a timer for 10 minutes. Sure, 10 minutes. Bobbling away beautifully in there. Can't wait to eat this. I just hope it tastes as good as it looks. Oh, this feels like the longest 10 minutes in history. So they're out of the oven and looking pretty good actually. Although 10 minutes does seem to be a bit too long because the edges are just a little bit scorched. But taste test is all that counts. How is it, Ellis? Is it good? And what have you got on your pizza? Can you show me what you've put on yours? What it What's that there? Is that chocolate? Yeah. And then what's this bit? Chocolate. Cool. Is it good? Yeah. First look at those pizza bases. They do look like knackerbrod. But once you actually cook it, the knackerbrod texture disappears and they're really nice and tasty. So in summary, should you bother trying to make knackerbrod pizza or not? Well, I kind of liked it. It's not anywhere near as tasty as a proper doughy bread pizza base. It was interesting and it was a good experience for the kids, but to be honest, you could just buy a regular bread pizza base and have a lot more taste at the end of the whole experiment. So my verdict on Knackerbrod pizza, 
<clears throat> don't bother. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. It was good fun regardless. Feel free to comment below if you've had a Knackabrod pizza and did you like it or did I do something wrong? And also, of course, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more random content like this. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching.